whether the top agree with it or not. Let's localize it and let's get out there, you know. You mentioned about why it's been postponed for years. You, said, you mentioned Felix, who was a great fan, who still is a great fan, sorry, because Felix worked in the factories for years. But the only reason I stopped because they're going to cut the factories too. Everything, all the industries have died because the government didn't give them the support. And there were any other Far East companies, and all that was always the industry to this town depended upon for years, you know. <coughs> so, I suppose. So, so they're stuck to dry and moved on. But the beauty also about the trade union council is what we can do as a, as a committee, as a people, as a, is bring committees to communities together, both sides of the community, whereas our political parties are very, very much polarised, still in Wolby for a considerable time. Trade unionists, in fact, bring everybody together, and we can go forward then with a, with a united voice, which I feel is better than some of our political parties. Okay, great. Okay. Okay. Uh, I was it, uh, uh, I was it, the, the whole, there's a link between the activity that you do and, and all the discussion that we've had, sort of very interesting, it's been sort of about the need to transform the trade union movement. It's absolutely true that the trade union movement, as Thomas says, is not fit for purpose, particularly at the top level. Absolutely isn't. It's that they, there are very few people more conservative than some of our trade union leaders. And one of the reasons that, A, there's the pay structure and all the rest of it, but there's also uh, a, a realm that's saying, you know, there's some of these people as bad as anybody else. And the, the scandal in the South, we had the leader of the Impact Union. It was one of the people who was flying off in private jets to Florida, along with sort of the heads of FOSS and all that there, sort of mean, And nothing happened about it in the trade union movement. There's no scandal. There's not a scandal in some two. They're not blaming any individuals for this. Where only 2.6 million pounds of public money was paid into sub two in mysterious circumstances. There's no, I mean, uh, <coughs> people ran around the world. Now, there's, there's still, we still haven't had a full explanation of that. So that disillusions people, no question about it. This illusions people. There's also the fact that he, he, uh, if you look at the attacks on the public service, both in the South and, and across the UK and so on, you think it's sticking out of me that the public service unions just be together and if they're going to take action, it will be stronger if they all clamp together. You know, instead of one at a time and all spread out one day space, all that nonsense, you know, <coughs> they're all together. It, there's a couple of unions sniffed at the idea, but they're not doing it. And now you've got the teachers union, the fire brigade union, the real unions, the Nipsai, uh, 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 Unison, the like, all in the public service. It's sticking out of me. You only wanted to do something about the cut. They would all be together, you know, and doing it. But as against that, all these unions have individual interests. So I mean, they're on competition for members. I mean, one of the saddest sites you can see, and I've seen it very recently in the streets in Derry, Clark Street in Derry. The two union officials, after a meeting which was called to discuss a, a cut, screaming on the one another's faces. You folks are fucking members, blah, 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 we fucking did this. Join us because you're useless. And you think, God, this was supposed to be about unity and action, you know. Now, so that, in a lot of cases, now, what do you do about that? And how do you change uh, the structures and get rid of them people? You can argue morally for it, and I care. But I think that the best way to do it is, is action. Let me give a couple of examples of what I mean, and this is going to come up later on this year. I believe that I could spark, if I talk about the need for a spark and people will get it me. As I mentioned this before briefly, uh, 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 that there's still in the House of Representatives, absolutely no question about it. Uh, 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 I say that admitted by the authorities and everybody else in Price, Waterhouse, Cooper, whoever it was, estimated 2,400 in an hour before the end of this year, and that's only sort of in a, in a single category. I think the trade union movement should be advising people and saying to people, don't leave the house. Don't let them repossess your house. Stick tight. We've got a lot of experience in Ireland of uh, a, a resistant eviction. And I can say the trade union movement will stand by you and so on. If it's a working class housing estate, local people will stick by them as well. And just go and say, we dare you to come in now. We all the tanks and guns if you want or whatever it is that you're going to use. We dare you to come in now. That in itself would send a thrill through people. It really would enthuse people. I say, at last, somebody's doing something sort of about this. When they're closing down, and they are going to close down old people's homes, for example, they know this because they're not already closed down, and they're scheduled to go. We are involved in the Foyleville, Foyleville home, sort of which is closed down. And eventually it was closed down, sort of a, 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 in the middle of last year, if you get the actual time, eight when it was. Now, there you had a situation where there was workers on site, and uh, they were uh, uh, negotiating, their union was negotiating about redeploying, about getting them, making sure sort of that they weren't for the place closed and so on, pay them off. Meanwhile, the relatives of the residents were campaigning against the closure altogether. And when they knew people, because if your mother was in the place, you would know some of the workers around there, uh, obviously, there wasn't a coming together about it. But this is going to happen more and more. I think what should happen there. Again, steady families, and you can people down there, they're not demented people, the vast majority of you know, sort of an old 
Go show me today. Stick tight. Sit down. We'll defend you. And we'll defend the jobs at the same time because you close that. You're not, for every service you deprive people of, you're undermining jobs as well if the people are provided that service. So there are things there that could actually you know, spark something off. Frankly, I, I bet you before the students all sat down in front of Belfast City Hall, I bet there's an awful lot of people who didn't know what EMA stood for. They probably knew afterwards. They knew afterwards what it was about. And Danny Kenny, the minister's having to think twice that all this sweating going on and storming now. Can we afford to do it and risk the students coming out again? There's another spark that can work. So students were, everybody said, terribly apathetic. They're not like the old days and all that. There, no radicalism and so on. I was in the middle of the crowd, said, you coming from a Northern Ireland committee meeting over the Unison office when I walked into the middle of that outside the city hall. And it was just brilliant to see. Way! That day, they went, once something happened like that there, now these things go up and down sometimes. You know the way, but there's lessons in that there, sort of, and it's that type of activity, sort of, which, and trades conscience can be crucial in that, because trades conscience don't have to be answerable. We have no full-timers in trades conscience telling us the official line is such and such. You have far more freedom, sort of, than a branch uh, of a union, and you have a broader remit, sort of, than in, in a, over a whole area, than a branch of, uh, a, of the union. I think of that perspective and that strategy as following. And of all trades councils, and I'm not saying, you know, when Derry's as bad as anywhere else, you know, it's difficult to fight this through, you know, and to get it done. There's always people saying, don't do that, or our union's not mandated, they agree to that. You have to fight it through and do it. But I think a trades council and that strategy, fight it all, stand for nothing, you know, sort of support, trade union support everybody in communities and the housing estates and the rest of it who are losing out and defend every service. Agitate in the community. You support workers. If there's workers in strike in the public service or elsewhere against pay cuts and the rest of it, have the community rise. Go to the picket line with them. Stand with people. Give them confidence. Let them know they're not alone. All those things. And we do. They're all simple things. These. They're not. You don't. They're not big intellectual. You don't have to know the history of anything or anything else. They do that. Common sense. Working class common sense. I think of the strategy like that can change the unions. And it also holds out the only hope of fighting back. And I don't, the, the, the only hope people talk about the need for a different political system here. You know, it sounds bloody crazy, the political system that we live under. You know, sorry, get the madness, I was listening to yesterday reports that Martin McGuinness had been given out to Michael McGimsey because McGimsey wouldn't cut the health service as quickly as he wanted. And you thought, has the world been turned upside down? You know, there's McGimsey on the television talking about, I believe in the NHS from the cradle to the grave. You know, I'm quoting a Norman Devon and all that there. Against the unfair, you think, what's going on here? You know, it's a, a, so there's a lot of flux there. I'm not blaming individuals about that. It's just an observable fact that that's going on. I think that type of strategy from trades councils and so on is the only hope that they have. So, I, mean, I also think it'll take off. I believe people will follow that, you know, in particular issues and so on. If not this, what? I haven't heard anybody come up with a better strategy than this. And I, Hope this Trabant Trades Council and our own Trades Council in Derry, and I hope on Saturday at the meeting of representatives of Trades Councils in Belfast will have a good ding dong argument about this and encourage all the Trades Councils to take this view. That's what I'll be saying, right? Okay, folks, I'm uh, just going to hand over to Michael for closing up March short and sweet. Uh, I'll give you something. Sure. Uh, I thought yeah. that was. <laughs> I thought that really, Short, three, really was upside down there whenever you consider the, the Unionist Party that made it the Jimsies and begged the British government in 1948 not to bring in the welfare system to Northern yeah. Ireland because it might even things up. But uh, no, now that we're talking about sparks, um, you know, what, what, what we want to do in the unemployed union is to have a series of marches and rallies right throughout Northern Ireland. And we would like to start in Straban in the next few weeks because Straban's got the highest unemployment in Europe. And I mean, I know that young people, I'm looking at some over there now, would, would be far more interested in getting out in the street with a red flag and shouting, you know, Tories out or whatever, than they would be in getting down to all the nitty gritty of the uh, theories of neoliberalism, you know. So, you know, keep this in mind, and I'm asking the Trades Council. The band would be on for uh, having a, a march and a rally and keep in mind, of course, you need 28 days' notice under the rules before you can have a march. Don't be, don't be getting too stuck on the rules before, <laughs> <laughs> before we start. Uh, well, okay, uh, okay uh, again, I, I, I think there's a lot has emerged this evening in what we've been talking about with Michael's. 
recommendation for to organise the unemployed. Eamon's recommendation for to look for the tactic, support people in struggle. The idea that we're looking beyond the very, very narrowly confined remit of contemporary trade unionism to what I would argue is now looking at a community style of trade unionism where we're bringing in the wider community behind the issues is what's essential. There's possibly two things. I'd always caution against just thinking that it's a matter of changing the leadership of a trade union because I think it's a much more complex issue than that, although there are many leading trade unionists that would benefit well by being, benefit us all by seeing them changed. But having said that, we, we have got to be careful that it's actually the structures we're changing and not just, it's not just a swapping of personnel. I think it's too simplistic on occasions. The thing about it is that but if we do bring in that the community behind the unions and integrate them into the unions and we're talking about community unionism, we are making that transformation that we're talking about. And at that stage, what I would be arguing for, rather than simply saying we, we, we change the, the leadership or we change some officials, as I say, some of them may well deserve it, but that the argument should be that the trade union movement should be supporting the class rather than different unions supporting different narrow sectors, because at that stage, it definitely leads to fragmentation and a buyout. But we're looking at, at, at that, different, that different concept that it's support for the class rather than a, a, a section of workers. The, the, the actual spark that might land, yes, I, I mean, I endorse what Eamon has said, because the one thing about it is, and you, you go back to the old days of the Land League, the Land League focused in on one area, and when they got the chance, they run with it. It happened to be in Mayo, it doesn't really matter. We have to support the issue where we get it, run with it, give people that confidence and courage, and then to be, uh, <coughs> surprised at just how quick the, the momentum and the confidence will build up and um, yeah that's what we I think have got to do is to look for it to transform it from the narrowness that we're on at the minute to broadening this in away from a, a narrow base and for you looking for support for the class. Okay thank you. Uh, well to bring it to a close then just um, thank everybody for coming. Uh, I appreciate all the uh, public people here and just to remind people there that we have a a website and uh, to go on, get on this night, and we'll be keeping everybody up to date. And we'll be looking to organise a meeting of those people who um, come forward tonight in the next two weeks. Ryan, there will be in contact, so make sure your details are there. So, thank you.